Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Russian forces have taken control of 40 more villages in East Ukraine, but President Zelensky says these and other gains are only temporary. They can only delay the inevitable, he said, the time when the invaders will have to leave our territory. Physical damage to Ukraine's buildings and infrastructure from Russia's invasion has reached roughly $60 billion, that's according to the World Bank. Meanwhile, the mayor of Mariupol has issued a new appeal on Friday for the full evacuation of the southern city, which President Vladimir Putin says is now mostly controlled by Russian forces. According to the latest update from Russia's defense ministry, Russia says it struck 58 military targets in Ukraine overnight, including sites where troops, fuel depots and military equipment were concentrated. The incumbent French President Emmanuel Macron and his far-right rival Marine Le Pen have embarked on their last day of campaigning, with both taking the offence ahead of the runoff. Elle a, elle a réussi, pardon, à avancer masqué. Uh, Speaking on French radio on Friday morning, Macron acknowledged his failure to quell some of the anger felt in the country, and which Le Pen, he said, was using to drive her campaign. <laughs> Two days before the vote, the centrist pro-European incumbent leads his anti-immigration Eurosceptic challenger in opinion polls by about 10 points. But a likely high level of abstention and anger with some of Macron's policies and his sometimes abrasive style means his re-election is no done deal. Le Pen, whose policies include a ban on Muslim headscarves in public, giving French nationals priority on jobs and benefits, and limiting Europe's rules on cross-border travel, said Macron embodies an elitism that has failed ordinary people. Saying she had the common sense of a mother, Le Pen slammed Macron's perceived arrogance in the TV debate, accusing him of disdain towards her and towards voters. President Uhuru Kenyatta has announced that Kenya's former president, Mwai Kibaki, has died at the age of 90. His 2002 election ended 40 years of one-party rule since independence. However, his 2007 re-election sparked months of nationwide violence and led to 1,200 deaths. President Kenyatta led the tributes, saying Mr Kibaki had led the charge to keep the ruling party accountable and had earned the abiding respect and affection of this nation. Opposition leader Kalonzo Masaiko, who served as Mr Kibaki's vice president from 2007 to 2013, called him an iconic father figure. At least 31 Palestinians have been injured in clashes with Israeli police at Al-Aqsa Mosque compound in Jerusalem. <laughs> It's the latest outbreak in a recent upsurge of violence at a site revered by Muslims and Jews alike. Red Crescent Ambulance Service, 14 Palestinians were taken to hospital, two with serious injuries. Israeli police said its forces intervened when hundreds of people began hurling rocks and fireworks and drew close to the Western Wall, where Jewish worship was underway. Britain and India have agreed to step up defence and business cooperation during a visit to New Delhi by Boris Johnson, who said a bilateral free trade deal could be wrapped up by October. On his first visit to the Indian capital as UK Prime Minister, Johnson discussed with his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi ways to boost security ties with India, which buys more than half of its military hardware from Russia. Johnson also paid tributes at the memorial of India's freedom movement fighter Mahatma Gandhi. It comes at a time when the West is trying to lure India away from Russia. On this visit alone, we've secured new deals worth a billion pounds, creating more than 11,000 jobs, and perhaps most significantly of all, we're using our Brexit freedoms to reach a bilateral free trade agreement. And today, Prime Minister Modi and I told our negotiators to get it done by Diwali in October. And Orthodox Christians have held a procession in the old city of Jerusalem, retracing what they believe is the route that Jesus Christ took to his crucifixion. <laughs> Worshippers who follow the Eastern calendar began the Easter festival of Good Friday with a procession through the Via Dolorosa to, to the Holy Sepulchre Church, where Christians believe Jesus was buried before rising from the dead three days later. The first station is where Jesus was believed to have been condemned to death. The last is the tomb where Christians believe he is buried. The annual ritual in the old city of Jerusalem attracts thousands of pilgrims from around the world every year. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to Channel Studios in Lagos.